Hey guys, Richard Holder here and welcome to the channel. Here's the question for today. Five liter Ford fans, how much camshaft can I run with my stock cylinder heads? How much piston to valve clearance does that Extreme Energy 274 cam have? And how does it compare to the stock cam? I'm gonna answer all those questions and show you how to check piston to valve. Let's get going. Okay, getting everything prepped and ready. We gotta put our checker spring on here first. There, place the stock spring, put air going to the cylinder. Our valve spring compressor, our front cover off, balancer off. We have to pull the intake also so we can get access to the lifters. We'll get the spring swapped over and get started. So we're gonna get the intake manifold off. Distributor out. To check piston and valve clearance on the stock cam to begin with, we've gotten rid of the factory hydraulic roller lifter because sometimes that will depress even with the light springs that we have, the light checker springs. So Mark whipped up this solid roller <laughs> setup, minimized deflection, so make sure that our testing is all accurate. So we're gonna stall the lifter in place. We'll start off with the exhaust. It doesn't really matter which one you start off with. Okay, we've got our solid roller lifter in place now. We also have a standard hydraulic over on the intake side. We're gonna measure the exhaust first. We've got our fancy dog bone just to stop it from rotating. Put that in place. That's all good. We don't need our spider hold down assembly. This is not gonna move around. You can see we have our checker spring set up both on the intake and the exhaust. We have also removed the valve seals to make sure that we don't run into a retainer to seal clearance while we're doing our piston to valve measurement. We also have this comp cams, adjustable length push rod. That way we can zero lash this thing basically to take all the deflection out of it. We don't want any preload while we're testing. We just want to have it at zero lash. So let's set up our dial indicator and find out what the piston to valve clearance is on the stock camshaft. We'll sell our push rod. Our rocker arms. Put them in. When we're tightening these down, we wanna make sure that, that we don't drop our tool. But more than that, we wanna make sure that the lifters are both down so that we can tighten this thing up and then adjust our push rod length. Okay, they're both on the heel of the cam now. So we can tighten these babies up. So we can tighten these babies up. Now we can adjust our push rod. You can see got slack in there. And all we've done is zero lash it, so it's ready to test. So what I like to do when I'm testing piston to valve clearance, you can put a dial indicator on it. It's gonna be very close at four or 10 or so degrees before and after TDC. But what I like to do is I just spin it around and find the tightest point and then I kind of start from there and move it back and forth into that sweet spot. So obviously we've got a lot of piston to valve clearance there. So we've got to spin it around. Just kind of keep checking. We're just looking for big movements here now. Okay, we're getting in the area now so we can put on our fixture. Okay, we're at our tightest point right now on the exhaust with a stock camshaft. 
you can see we have it set at zero. So we got one, two, about 250,000 clearance on the stock camshaft, which is not surprising. It's a pretty mild camshaft. So lots of piston to valve with a stock camshaft, about 250 on the exhaust. Now that we've tested the exhaust, let's set up for the intake. So I'm remove all of this. We need to swap over our solid roller lifter. Get both of our lifters in position. Take off our rockers. Move our push rod. Swap over the show you guys. We're gonna swap over our lifters. Sometimes this is easy if you pop the lifter up a little bit. There you go. Swap that one over. Our other lifter back in the hole. Line everything up. Got our dog bone. Our dog bone lined up. In place. Now we're ready to install the push rod. Okay, we can install our adjustable push rod. Followed by the rocker arms. Now we want to take up any slack in our change. Yeah, see, very, very minimal. The push rod length intake to exhaust should be the same. There might be a little bit of variation. We just take up that slack. That's the nice thing about the adjustable push rod. Now we're ready to spin it around like we did with the exhaust and find out where the tightest point is on the intake. So we've quickly found our tight point on the intake. So we'll have to check and see what the piston and valve clearance is. Let's install our fancy test rig. Our magnetic base. It's all about that base. One, so less than 200 right there. I'll go ahead and I'll bring you guys over and show you after we find the tightest point. One, 150. One fifty. Maybe we might be past it. Yep, so we're past it, so it's back here just a little bit. So that's about 140, 145. That's our tightest spot right there. So I'll bring you guys around, you guys can take a look. There we go. So one and forty five. That's actually just fascinating. So it goes all the way around, which is a hundred thousandths, and then over to the sixty five, but since we're going backwards, 
It's 145,000 piston to valve clearance on the stock camshaft on the intake. Now that we run the stock cam, check our springs, dial indicator, solid roller camshaft, <laughs> at least the solid roller lifter. Let's take this apart and install the Extreme Energy 274 cam that I always recommend and see how much piston valve clearance we have on that combination. See how the dots are lined up? See, we've got our dial indicator. So when we depress the valve, it tells us how much piston to valve clearance, and then we'll get it at its tightest point and then measure it and see what that is, see what that number is. Okay guys, as you can see, we installed the Extreme Energy 274 cam, set up our piston to valve checker, and we got the following results. With the Extreme Energy 274 cam, we had right at 100,000 piston to valve clearance on the intake and almost 200 on the exhaust, which tells us one thing. We can put a bigger camshaft in this motor. There is available piston to valve clearance because we haven't even talked about deflection. I mean, we're just checking this static and we're checking it with light checker springs. So there's a lot more deflection that would improve piston to valve clearance, meaning giving you more piston to valve clearance while this thing is actually running. So the question is, how much more camshaft can we put in this? Well, this is actually surprising to me because I thought that a 274 cam was kind of getting near the limit of what you could do with the available piston valve clearance on a stock 5 liter, but apparently not. According to Billy Godbold at Comp Cams, if we were to replace the 274 with a 282 cam, unfortunately I don't have one to check, but he said, according to the math, we would decrease piston valve clearance by 25 to 26 thousandths, meaning that the 282 cam would also fit in this combination so if anybody out there has checked that make sure and let me know if you've actually run that cam and in otherwise stock five liter obviously with the spring upgrade and whatnot but if you've run that cam shaft please let me know in the comments we can also go even bigger than that 282 but at some point what you'll have to do is start playing with the lobe separation angle as you go up in duration you're going to have to start widening the lobe separation angle which is going to allow you to run more duration and here's a very important point and everybody always asks about this how much much lift I can run. How much lift can I run with the available piston to valve clearance? And actually, lift has very little to do with piston to valve clearance. And I'll tell you why. At maximum lift on the camshaft, the piston is already two or more inches down in the bore. That means you could run a two inch lift cam and not worry about piston to valve clearance. Of course, that's not totally true, but it gives you an idea. Lift, very little effect, duration, and the other events that are happening with the camshaft play a big part in available piston and valve clearance, but on your stock 302 with stock heads and stock pistons, you can run a pretty good sized camshaft. Now coming up in part two, let's talk about a head swap. Okay guys, what did we learn from this little adventure? Checking piston and valve clearance on our five liter forward. And not surprisingly, the bigger camshaft had less piston to valve clearance than the stock camshaft. But we kind of knew that going in. Also, I got more information on what other kinds of cams we might be able to fit given the available piston to valve clearance on that 274 cam and the stock cam. So how much camshaft can I actually put in a five liter Ford with the stock heads? But I know what you're thinking, Richard, make sure to make the comment. What happens if we upgrade the cylinder head and that will be coming up in part two. I've got a set of airflow research heads. That's right, airflow research heads. The enforcer heads, I'm gonna put those on this same short block and run another test with a camshaft with a bigger valve where we have problems with piston to valve. Will this camshaft even fit? Coming up in part two. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.